and welcome to Mid-American Gardener. This is a great time to talk about plants, so stay tuned. That's what we're gonna do. I'm Diane Nolan and I teach horticulture at the University of Illinois in the Crop Sciences Department in the College of Aces. So I might talk about cut flowers if there are questions on that or perennials, but there are other really talented, very smart people next to me. Let's find out who they are and what their expertise is. So I'm gonna throw it over to you first, Chuck Boyt. Thank you, Diane. I was in the Department of Crop Sciences also. I have retired, as has Diane, except she couldn't tell it. <laughs> um, my specialties were vegetables and herbs, but I can, I can stray beyond mm -hmm. that on occasion. Very good. All right, we have a question here tonight on asparagus, a good solid perennial vegetable. Uh, and they have a picture of an unusual stalk in a 20 year old asparagus bed. Uh, it's about one inch wide, about as tall as the other plants. And there's only one stem in the whole patch. Uh, and should I prune it now or in the spring? This was a question from October. Uh, at this point, I don't think, it, just do it in the spring. Um, it's what's called fasciation. And th those of us here haven't seen that a lot on asparagus. Uh, so there are some herbicide or other things that might have caused it, but in a lot of other plants, it's relatively common. If you, if you go out in the spring when dandelions are rampant, sometimes they'll do that. They'll get a, a flattened stem that looks like multiple stems all fused together into one. Um, if, it, if it happens continually, uh, you might want to dig down and, and, and try to do away with that part of the crown. But I think basically it's not a big problem. Uh, just when you see it, cut it off at ground level like you would any other asparagus spear. Uh, if it bothers you, and uh, shouldn't really be, shouldn't really be an, an ongoing uh, trial. And I wonder if it's going to be the same area of the plant, or if it's just once one and done. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, if that if that part of the crown has mm -hmm. actually mutated to to be fasciated, or if it was just something that happened to that particular you know, bud. A quick growth because of water, fertilizer, mm. yeah. or the other things, but. Uh, if it happens again, you should send something back in. I'm just curious because I've not seen it on mine. That'd yeah, be fascinating to see. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> Someone was bound to say it. Yeah. I said it before I, air. I, I, are you going to say fascinating, fascinated asparagus? <laughs> Good job! I, I dared him to do it, and you did it. Sorry, well done. Humor. <laughs> I know. Let's move along, then, folks. Okay, let's go to you, Kai Zadarani. All right. Uh, is that what you're calling me today? Okay, yes, yes I'm Kai Zatarani. <laughs> I, I uh, wear a couple of hats. I'm the program director for uh, the horticulture and landscape uh, in the horticulture and landscape department at Parkland College, my home base, and then I also teach at the College of Aces. Uh, but today, uh, the question I'm looking at is about lilac. And the question is, when do you prune them? And normally, anything ideally not ideally you shouldn't be pruning them till after they have bloomed so if they because right now they're setting their buds so you don't want to do anything in late fall let the let the buds fill out and then have a nice uh, bumper bloom crop uh in spring and then right after they're done blooming <coughs> you can go ahead and prune them and uh, that should work fine yeah very good. Thank you, Kaizad. And okay. now, next to you, John Bodensteiner. I'm John Bodensteiner. I'm a Vermilion uh, Master Gardener, and uh, uh, I like perennials, uh, shrubs, trees. If it's green, I usually like it. So. What about tomatoes? Uh, yes, I do like tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, you, John. I, I was on the verge of being stunned when you yeah. mentioned tomatoes. <laughs> um, my question I, I have uh, has to do with blackberries. I inherited a thornless blackberry plant. Can you tell me what fertilizer to use? What uh, can you recommend to prevent Japanese beetles from destroying leaves and when to apply it? Good question. Um, as far as <coughs> what fertilizer to use, everything I could find, uh, use a um, balanced fertilizer, a 10-10-10, or if you can't find that, if you find a 20-20-20, you cut that in half and just put half as much on. Um, the one that they say really works best for blackberries, which might be difficult to find, is a 12-10-10. Just a little bit more nitrogen uh, than the other two, but I would think those being that close that a 10-10-10 or 20-20-20 would be uh, good. The other thing, uh, Japanese beetles, <clears throat> uh, 
Oh, when, when, to, when to apply it. Uh, spring, uh, when it starts to grow, is the first application. And then after you're done picking, after, the, after it's done fruiting, you can give it another uh, shot of uh, fertilizer. And usually if you look at your container, it's gonna say use this much, use half at the spring, half in the fall. Uh, as far as Japanese beetles, that's an edible fruit. So for me to recommend anything like that, I really wouldn't. I would go out there with a cup and a, a cup of uh, soapy water or a little bit of alcohol and just tap them in and walk away and just keep it a, you know, uh, if you get them early, the first ones are the most uh, important to get because they put out a pheromone mm -hmm. and it kind of says, here's something to eat, come, come hither. And so if you get rid of the first ones, uh, you usually don't end up as, with as many. So, um, so scout those out. Scout them out. Look for those and take good care of them from there. Good, thank you, John, very much. Well, we're waiting for some phone calls to come in, so that's just a hint for you <coughs> folks out there. But while we're doing that, I do wanna show these really nice primrose that I found today. This is the time of the year, early, early spring, late winter, when we need some color. And these are just really pretty. They're, um, these are perennial, so you, it's not something you just have and then toss. I will plant these in my garden in, in shady, a shady spot in April, but I'll enjoy them on the windowsill. And there are a lot of buds down in here, so I'll get a few, but I'll you know, kind of deadhead the flowers that are spent and let the new ones come on. I've already removed a couple flowers and a couple leaves, but mm -hmm. just I, I'll put them in a tray of water and then usually water from above and let it drain through in my east window because that's the one I have the most windowsill. Yeah. If but we have another primrose. another day like we did last week, you know, we've yeah. got 60 degrees. 60 degrees yeah. I had orchard bees out and I, mm -hmm. they were buzzing around. It was eating outside, it was so nice. And I took out a little bit of honey and a cap and just let them eat that. But oh, if you had these out there, they probably oh, would gosh, really like yeah. something like that. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. I was telling John before the show, but these, I have some penguins like this that I planted last year, and they were flowering in December in that mm -hmm. warm spell. Oh, wow. And so I, I think the bees probably did mm -hmm. find those, yeah. but they're in a shady spot, That's and good. I've got some more places for these. I love the fragrance. It's not overpowering, but mm. if you get down in there, it's just a wonderful, it's little, just subtle, wonderful, nice, wonderful yeah. little sweet. It won't blow you out of the house like, like, a, like a paper white narcissus. Because right. some of those are... <clears throat> Some very indoors, strong. too fragrant, yeah. but this is very yeah. light. You have to go after this. It doesn't come and get yeah. you. I can't really <coughs> smell it this far away, I, but yeah. if you get up close, then you notice, and it's just really nice. Yeah. So anyway, try to find some fun plants for indoors while we're waiting for it to be spring. I'm going to go next to the Did You Know, Did you know video segment. Grapes don't only taste good, they also help cure asthma, indigestion, migraine, kidney disease, and fatigue. So try grapes the next time you are not feeling well. Okay, and from that we're gonna go to the phone lines. Let's go to Tanya's question about a gardenia on line two. Hello, Tanya. Hi, um, the last couple years I've had uh, two gardenia trees that I've brought in, of course, over the winter. And every, every year they get, um, when they're in the house, about this time of year, they get mealybugs. Are these acceptable to mealybugs more than other plants? I've had a bunch of house plants and I've never had a problem other than with the gardenia tree. They're little magnets almost, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> right up there with coleus on the, on the, yeah. on the mealybug hit list. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I had one for years, and, and finally it got so bad we just couldn't couldn't cure it during the 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 outdoor season enough for it to live. So, are you recommending safer soap, or what? What do if you it, recommend? If you if you don't have a lot, what I take is it like a Q-tip and dip it in some alcohol and just wipe them. Okay. That yeah. seems to. But again, you're right. If based on how many how, you how have, many. and right. then maybe the spray can yeah, the, all kinds of yeah the insecticidal, yeah, insecticidal soap, soap yeah, if, for if, those. if the individual plant isn't right. isn't sentimental right it might be easier to start with a new one mm -hmm. I and, see. and, mm -hmm. and control them as you first see them as opposed to having hundreds of them and then trying to then try to, to, to get, get each yeah. one but 
mine happened to be sentimental, so I hung on to it a lot longer than I probably should have. I see. Well, that's there's some ideas for you, and thank you for your question. Let's go to Maria's question on line three, and it looks like it's about a gardenia. Hi, Maria. Uh, this is Fran. Oh, it's Fran. Hi there. <laughs> yes, uh, my gardenia has uh, it's a white crystal-like stuff on it. It's almost like kosher salt-looking stuff. And I wondered if you'd know what that is and what I should do. So something has, you think it's from the exudate of the gardenia itself, or is it from aphids, or what do you think yeah. that would be? Are you talking to me? I'm talking to these three yeah. really intelligent people <laughs> next to me, and they're going to come up with the answer. I just know I would it. say it's probably that she might have some aphids, aphids and it's, yeah. it's uh, the, the dry, yeah. yeah. The dry spittle. Have you seen any movement on there or anything in, in terms of, uh, as we like to say, creepy crawlies? No. Uh, I just noticed it tonight. I have it up on a ledge in my kitchen because I have windows up there, and I got up on a ladder to water it and noticed this stuff on it. Yeah, check and under. even uh, around where there's been buds. Right, because gardenias, I mean, even this time of the year or, neither, or either way, they don't, if I'm right, they don't exude any mm -mm. liquid or any, I mean, not sap for sure, so I probably just check on uh, for what's going on with the insects. And John, what were you getting I'm ready to say? I was gonna say, just check under, on the underside. If you didn't right. see anything, check on the underside of the leaf, uh, check along the, the, the margins of the, um, the, the, the leaf or the leaf mm -hmm. node and make sure that you don't see anything. You may even have to take a magnifying glass and, and just look right. in there. So I would almost rub that off to see yeah. what comes back again. Right, just to wipe it off and just see. I don't it. know if it, you would see yeah, anything from idea, it, but yeah. just to see how quick it reappears or if it does at all. Because if it's harder to water, you may not have noticed anything. So you mm -hmm. might remove it and see if anything else comes back when you water it the next time. Okay, well thank you. I think it's fun having two gardenia questions and they're <laughs> actually a little bit different. So um, it's the time of year for indoor plants. Well, I'm going to try to go to line four. I think we have a question about transferring or transplanting and is it Ruli? Let's go to line four. Yeah, hi Diana. Hi How there. Okay, I'm just watching the, the, uh, the flowers that you have just uh, before you. I'm yes. Yeah, can I transfer it to a bigger pot? You can. I think these have been grown in pretty tightly. So yes, you could move it up to the next size bigger. I wouldn't go huge, but you could put it in, you could put two together. Mm -hmm. Actually, it'd look better to have a third one and have you know, yeah, even yeah. three in a lower, wider pot, and that'd be really pretty as well. So the answer I think is yes, but don't put one into a really huge pot. Just go the next size or group them and go to a pot that still yeah. nestles them. You could either even kind of use them as a ground cover or if you had like a, a tree form of, of something. And oh, that'd and be pretty. That kind of around the base Some of standard mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. lavender or rosemary or something and have this at the base. They work great in design as border plants. So you've got mm -hmm. something that's clump mounted. Mm -hmm. And, and just repeat that in a pot. Mm -hmm. And they stay low, they, they don't get tall. So. Right. So it's really a great plant. Excellent, you have good design eye. I think that's a good idea to transfer <coughs> and maybe do some grouping if you would find more of these to purchase. So impulse item for me from the grocery store. So <laughs> garden Sounds center. Like they pretty much forced it on you. I know. <laughs> I, it, it was a rough, it was a Somebody sacrifice. Had to buy it. <laughs> Someone had to buy it, it had to be me. <laughs> so thank you for your question very much. Now let's go to line two and Susie has a daffodil question for us. Hi Susie. Hi Diane, thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. I have um, several large groups of the ruffled fancy daffodils all over in all of my garden. And this one particular batch will get the buds on them, and then they turn brown and nothing. And I usually throw um, bulb food and blood meal and things like that around, kind of scatter it everywhere. And, and all of the other ones do beautiful except for this one bunch, and it's been four years in a row that they've done that, and I was wondering what could be the problem. Hmm. So you're, you're saying the flower buds turn brown? Yeah, they'll, they'll start to bud and then it turns brown and nothing. 
it could be that they are a very, very early variety and that they're kind of getting, you know, you, they may be out of the ground already and you really don't notice them and they're getting nipped by a, a you know, a, a, a real cold spell mm -hmm. yeah. and they're, they're technically frozen. They don't know it until they, they open up, basically. There's still a little bit of life in them, but um, I would bet that they're the, probably the earliest ones that put up the, the, the flower bud and uh, I, I know some of them in this area are technically almost zone six because they do come up so early that they're not recommended for this area. So, because we do get, it, mm -hmm. especially this year, like we had, what, a week ago, we had 60 degree weather. Mm -hmm. And I know my daffodils are up. Now, I don't see any of the flower buds, but if they're just right below, where if you've got leaf mold and stuff like that down, uh, mulch and uh, where there's there's not protected enough from the ground anymore and it gets down to zero or or I'm not sure 10, ten even 10 might might do enough damage that it, uh, the flowers tend to be a little bit more tender than the green so I've even had some of my early ones the, even the green gets nipped a little bit on top yes uh-huh Susie, you might try moving, you know, as you have them come up and they don't work, you might try moving some of those closer right. to the foundation of your home or try to find a microclimate. I know it's not enough to make it another zone, but right. sometimes... That you might help. <coughs> I mean, it's a little bit of protection. Yeah. You know, take them out of the wind or... You can't yeah. lose. And, they, and, and you might try putting some uh, evergreen balms and mulching mm -hmm. loose leaves over them in the fall so that they stay a little bit... Uh, more even temperature so they're not pushing the ground it'll stay a little cooler or, and uh, not um, get frostbit. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. note where it is and try to dig. Yeah that'd be a good idea to move them. And move them just at least try that. Thank you so much for your question. Now let's go to Janet's question on line <laughs> six and it's about gardenia. Hi <laughs> Janet. Hello there Diane and everybody. Uh, this is our third question for gardenia. I think it's great. Go for yeah, it. This one is my gardenia is growing <laughs> crazy. It has long tendrils, about two, two to three feet, and there's no sign of a bud anywhere. Just little bitty uh, leaves all the way out. This is the second time I've tried a gardenia, and this is the first time it's ever done anything like this. It's spindly, growing all over the place. What should I do? Well... To me, it sounds like it needs some light. higher light yeah. or a stronger or closer right. light. It looks like it, it sounds like it's reaching for yes. it's getting leggy, and that's mm -hmm. normally a factor of less of poor sunlight. What yeah. direction, what window direction do you have your gardenia in? South window, and wow. everything else, my bougainvillea is blooming, oh. and wow. ev my helleborus is blooming. That should be really else good. It's blooming like crazy, but this thing is just growing spindly. Uh, let me ask you this, have you repotted this recently or have you potted it? Yes, I repotted it last summer. Okay. Did you oh, give it a whole fine. bunch of fertilizer this fall? I gave it just a little bit of uh, os osmote, whatever osmocote? it is. Osmocote? Mm -hmm. Yeah, osmocote. And uh, it, uh, the rest of the plant is fine. There's some bushy parts down at the bottom. This is not, not only the branches that are growing out, it's these spindly long things that are going toward the window. It's a south window and it gets light from about nine in the morning to four in the afternoon. Well, that's mm. really good, yeah. actually. I mean, not the spindly growth, right. but the yeah. light that you're right. giving it is, sounds good. Would it be worth it for her to almost have a spotlight on that one plant just to try more or? Let's see if the others are doing, I wonder. But the others yeah, are doing great. Especially Bougainvillea and you know, some yeah. of the They're other in the plants. same category. Right, right tropical and needing the same materials so but if you trim on it that's going to force new growth and right. that'll be just as spindly right so i would almost avoid pruning it except maybe you can't stand the way it looks <laughs> but pruning is not done now because it right. it, it says grow mm -hmm. and you don't want it to try to grow in you know late winter early spring wow are we kind of stumped yeah, yeah. um we're not sure. You might try moving this plant to the front, you know, by the window. The grouping sounds good for humidity, higher humidity, but something's up. I wonder if it's that part of the plant, too. I wonder if there's, you were talking about the asparagus, but I wonder if something about that part of the plant. Mm -hmm. So when it gets closer to spring, I would trim back on those right. spindly Definitely. ones. But you're going to have to put up for, with it for a while. 
and maybe we'll figure something out. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you've uh, given us a little bit of something to think about, but for now, Janet, we're not sure. <laughs> so hopefully it'll work out. Let us know if it does. Well, let's do one more question, and then we'll go to emails. Let's go to Tom, and he has a BlackBerry question on line three. Hi there, Tom. Hello, listen, thanks for taking my call. You're I'm welcome. really curious as to which uh, BlackBerry varieties and raspberry varieties are best in Illinois. I'm not considered so concerned so much with berry size as I am good berry flavor. It seems to be the stuff in the stores don't have a lot of blackberry flavor anymore. I sure appreciate any pointers you have. Okay. The, um, what you want to do is, is I, I know there's some new ones out of Arkansas that are supposed to be highly, highly flavorful. The only problem is they're zone six. Mm. So th that it's not gonna work here. Mm -hmm. Some of the old um, heirloom varieties, the, uh, I think there's Cherokee and Natchez. Some of those have a little bit smaller berries, but are, are pretty good in flavor. Um, a lot of times if you go into the catalogs or go on the internet, um, look at, see what the specs of that plant are. And most of the time they'll say, oh, huge fruits. Um, those may not be the ones that you want. You want something that's a little bit smaller where the sugars and the flavors are all concentrated into a smaller berry. Uh, most of the time they're gonna say highly flavorful and they'll mm -hmm. tell you which ones but something, an old, an old variety, uh, usually not, I wouldn't try the new ones. Uh, some of those are nice, they're thornless. Um, but again, some of them are not for our area. So you have to be really careful uh, uh, about uh, which ones you get. I'm not sure which ones are Dr. Yeah. Skirvin's varieties. Yeah, they I'm not, they, they are thornless, but they're mm -hmm. not, I mean, they still, I have one and it tastes good. Nice. I just don't remember the variety yeah, of it. Variety. But it's you know it's an Illinois variety, mm -hmm. but it's it's a it's an in between size. It's not the biggest one, so I think that tastes pretty good. Mm -hmm. Well, we do have a garlic question. I have to go to it. I have to go to the garlic <laughs> question. So Tom, on line two, what is your question about garlic? Oh, I hope that wasn't Tom on line two. I just heard a. Oh, I heard a. I heard tone. it. Oh, I hope you call back. So if we get the garlic question, we'll call back. But now let's go to you, Chuck, and your email. Okay, <clears throat> this is a, should be a fairly quick one. Uh, jasmine vine, do you know if jasmine will do well in Springfield? I'm assuming that's Springfield, mm -hmm. Illinois. Mm -hmm. uh, the quick answer is no. It's a, it's a much more tender plant than we can hope to get through the winter here. Um, It'll look good on her porch in the summer, right. but it's yeah, not I going suppose. to look like those uh, pictures. We were looking pictures. for alternatives, and we came up with maybe a sweet autumn clematis to, to co cover the fence. That certainly is a rampant grower and does have some fragrance in the fall. Or maybe uh, if you can find a, like a climbing or a rambling rose that, that, that mm -hmm. is listed as having good scent, that, that might work as well. But, but sorry, Jasmine just is not... not hardy in this part of the world, nor is it likely to be in our lifetime. <coughs> Hopefully. <laughs> so, yes, very well done. Thank you. And now, Kaizad. All right. Well, we have the age-old uh, Creeping Charlie, or as we like to call it, the, the Ivy, uh, also sometimes known as Swedish Ivy. And uh, yes, there have been, if I had one answer, I wouldn't be sitting here because I would be a multimillionaire if I came <laughs> up with one something that you can hit it. Well, we've talked about nothing personally, and some of us shared this uh, beats, you know, good old elbow grease. You're going to have to like tug on it, get as much of it carefully uh, out. I've also known people that do a combination of hitting it with an herbicide, a glyphosate-based herbicide, after they pulled and dug up as much of it as you can, hitting it with a systemic. But really, there's no, because the way it gets into the other plants, even mm -hmm. when you're trying to hit it with a systemic herbicide, you've gotta be careful because you're gonna try, you will hurt some of the other plants. So the best thing you can do, also uh, uh, the bits or areas in my garden where I have, I actually literally get down on my hands and knees, we'll try and pull as much as I can. Then I get like a flat, like almost a trenching um, spade, make sure it's pretty sharp and go in literally just underneath couple of inches and just kind of like you were stripping sod. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm an old landscaper at heart and been there, done that. So 
try to get out as much of, and then please dispose that right away. Biggest mistake people make, they will leave it sitting there uh -huh. thinking, oh, tomorrow, and then it, you know, it'll, I mean, literally <laughs> it'll walk up and start creeping and mm -hmm. doing its Dolan affairs, rhizomatis, and, you know, all the crazy activities. Well, but, and, and it <clears throat> seeds as well, so. That's, I'm glad you, you brought you, that, yeah. you, you can't, I mean, just because you get every living right. piece of it out, there's still seeds there lurking and, and waiting to come and fill back in as soon as you exactly. turn your back. Exactly. So exactly. multiple uh, yeah. Multiple times and multiple and avenues. And, yeah, there's no one <laughs> quick and, and fix answer. Extreme patience because yeah. it, the, it may never be gone. In the spring is the best time when it's before right. the the soil has been compacted. You can go on one end and just pull up, you know, mm -hmm. a couple Literally. of yards worth. Yeah. And they haven't yeah. created <laughs> seeds yet, yeah. so that's. Perfect but there time, still yeah. may be Perfect. seeds <laughs> lurking. Yeah. Wow. Nothing like a Creeping Charlie question to really end out the show, so that's great. Well, thank you all for watching. Thank you for your expertise here on the panel, and I hope that you get out or stay inside and have a great week gardening. Bye-bye.